This is episode 58 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Welcome to episode 58 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. And my, how things have changed. Just a few weeks ago, we were talking about the best, best investment property, how we convert that duplex and where we can find some vacant land to develop. And now we're talking about how to find toilet paper. And that sounds funny and it kind of is, but kind of isn't. Things have really changed and I've had a lot of people reaching out to me asking me what I think, what I see happening in the market. For one, I'll say you're in the right place if you're investing in real estate. This is why I've been an investor of real estate as long as I've been an investor because I truly do believe in times like these, we're likely to see people cut out a lot of the non-essentials in their buying and real estate, fortunately for us real estate investors is not one of those things. People will always need a place to live, so I'm glad that I'm a real estate investor. However, I will say that there are some things that are concerning. For one, the federal and provincial governments have been talking a lot and uh, filling people's heads with ideas such as they can defer their mortgage payments or they shouldn't have to pay rent in times like these. Currently, we are not able to evict tenants here in Ontario. Ontario. These will all have implications on how we do business going forward, but I am confident that the federal and provincial government will step in and give us some sort of a plan that makes sense. It's times like these that I'm very glad that I've saved a reserve of cash for every single property that I have. I've done it for those times of uncertainty just so that I'm able to react and able to weather the storm as needed. I'm not giving financial advice here, but my thought on what the best course of action to do would be uh, cut out those non-essentials yourself right now. Save up your money, save up your cash just in case case you have any issues with your tenants, just in case you are still paying your mortgage but not collecting rent so that you can get through this time. I do believe that this is silver lining that will be there for us investors and that we're going to have opportunities to buy properties potentially that other people cannot buy. Uh, so far, we've seen a very stable real estate market, despite the fact that the stock market has significantly gone down. And I do believe that people will continue to transact on real estate. I do believe that there still are deals to be had. And when all the dust settles from all this, people are still still going to need a place to live. So we're in a very good position for that. With that being said, keep an eye on what, what's happening. Keep an eye on the news. Obviously, please be safe. Stock up on that toilet paper when, when you can. And uh, of course, make sure that you're subscribed to this podcast so that we can uh, we can stay in touch through the whole thing. More on point for today's episode is my interview with Rod Cleef. And this was actually very well timed because Rod is an investor that's gone through a lot of hard times and come out on the top. Uh, Rod is an investor who I believe is the most wealthy of anyone I've ever had on this show although I didn't get a confirmation from him on exact numbers. He talks of a story of how he lost $50 million in the crash of 2008-2009. He's from Sarasota, Florida. He uh, loves living on the beach. He lives in a compound, not a house, uh, right on the Gulf of Mexico. He tells his story of success, tells how he got there. And this is one of the first interviews that I've done that was not in person in almost a year. This is the part where I would normally tell you about the Greater Hamilton REI meet meetup. However, we have canceled that for the time being, and we will be booking future events when it is appropriate to do so. In the meantime, if you could just spend your time hitting that like and subscribe button, leaving a review, subscribing on iTunes or wherever it is that you listen. I'd really appreciate it. It's going to help the podcast grow and help us stay in touch through uh, these interesting economic times. So without further ado, please enjoy episode 58 with Rod Cleef. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Rod Cleef, on the show. Rod, thank you very much for taking the time. Oh, let's have some fun, Andrew. I'm really looking forward to this, my friend. Yeah, me too. Well, Rod, you know, I, I occasionally get emails from people asking to be on the show. Well, this was from uh, from a booking agent and and occasionally I open them and, and read the uh, the bio. I opened yours and I'm like, whoa, OK, yeah, we're going to get this guy on the podcast. So um, <laughs> I'd love it if you just take a moment and just tell my listeners all about you because they won't know. And uh, and I think that you you've got a lot of wisdom to uh, to share. Sure. No, thank, thank you. Appreciate that. So, you know, let's go back a ways. I immigrated. I'm, a, I'm an immigrant. So I know, you know, you're, you're, you're Canadian based and I'm an immigrant. I immigrated from the Netherlands when I was six years old um, with my brother, Albert, my mother's Vansha. Uh, we ended up in Denver, Colorado, where I, I lived for the next 30 years. And 
we didn't have much. Okay. I, I remember wearing clothes from um, secondhand stores like the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school until I could afford to buy clothes. And, you know, we ate expired food. And I remember we had to go to the day old bread store. We drank powdered milk because my mom thought milk was healthy at the time. And, um, you know, so we struggled. And, and I'm sure you've got listeners that had it harder than we did or have, maybe have it harder now. But see, the thing with me is I knew I wanted more. And luckily, my mom had an incredible work ethic. So she babysat kids so we'd have enough money to eat. And she made a lot of money babysitting kids. In fact, she invested in the stock market. She was a bit of an entrepreneur. I'm sure that's where I got it. But with her babysitting money, when I was 14, she bought the house across the street from us for about $30,000. Now, then when I was 17, she told me it had gone up $20,000 in her sleep. Just It was worth over $50,000. I'm like, What? Forget college, I'm going right into real estate. So I got my real estate broker's license here in, in Colorado at that time, right when I turned 18. And, uh, and I was a broker, you know, in, in the States now, if, if you wanna be a broker, typically you need some experience. Well, they didn't know that back then. They just let me be a broker right when I turned 18. Now they got smart. But my first year in real estate, I maybe made about eight to $10,000. My second year in real estate, I maybe made about, I don't know, ten to twelve thousand dollars. But my third year, I made well over a hundred thousand dollars, and and one of the things I enjoy talking about, uh, if you if you'd like, I can talk about the mindset it took. Um, you know what happened back then that what to cause me to ten x my income. But fast forward to today, you know I've owned over two thousand houses that I've rented long term. I've owned multiple apartment complexes. We bought you know a thousand doors last year. We've got eight hundred doors under contract right now. Um, you know I've got a, a a big thought leadership platform that I've created, uh, which we can talk about later if you like. But but um, you know would you like me to chat about? What happened between year two and three back when I was, I guess it would have been 20 to 21 years old. This is yeah, 1979. Uh, no, wait a minute. 19, uh, 19, 1980. 1980. So, Rod, yeah, I'd absolutely love to know know a little bit more about uh, about what happened there between you at year two and year three. And uh, yeah, please, please enlighten Sounds us. Sounds good. Yeah, no, it, I think it's really important because... Um, and I, and I talk about this on my podcast that really it's my belief that 80 to 90% of your success in anything is your mindset and your psychology. Only 10 to 20% is the real estate knowledge. You can learn everything you want to learn, but if you don't take action with what you learn, you know, nothing will ever happen. I mean, if, 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 if it was just knowledge, there'd be thousands and thousands of wealthy librarians and college professors out there. It's, 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 you got to do and, and continue to do. So what happened was I met a guy that taught me about that, taught me about mindset psychology. I worked with him and, um, and, and he got me going. And, and so, um, you know, like I said, uh, you know, really took off. I've owned over 2,000 houses. I rented long term. In 2006, my net worth went up. I want to think I want to make it this right. $17 million while I slept. Uh, a little more than my mom's 20,000. And but there's a punchline, you know, and when that happens, when you have a big year like that, you know, people can tend to get a big head and I got a big head. I thought I was a freaking real estate God. I thought I could do no wrong. I can barely fit my head through a door. And when that happens, you know, God of the universe, whatever you believe will give you, you know, a nice smackdown. Well, that was 2008 for me. I lost that $16 million, $17 million and a whole lot more. I lost $50 million in 2008. I crashed and burned. And, you know, at that time, I had 800 houses along the Gulf Coast of Florida, I had multiple apartment complexes, and the whole thing just imploded. And I can, I can get into the detail of that with you later, but let's talk about the mindset piece, because mm -hmm. what I like to talk about, I talk about it on my podcast and, and uh, also at my live events, is the mindset it took to have 50 million lose in the first place, but really then the mindset it took to recover back to the success that I enjoy today. And so if you'll humor me, let me take, let me share with your listeners, and it'll take about five minutes, a process that I spent an hour, about an hour on with my students um, that will really help hone this in. Do you want me to drill yeah, down on that do. a little? Please okay. Do. All right. So what it is, is it's, it's kind of a goal setting process on steroids. And so if you're listening, if you have the opportunity to take some notes, I think you'll be glad you did. Um, but what you want to do is you want to pick a time when you've got a lot of energy. Okay. And, and, and you can carve out an hour and you're not going to be distracted and, you know, make sure you're well hydrated as I get a drink of water. 
make sure that you don't do it right after you do a meal because you want a lot of energy for this process. But you're going to sit down and write down everything you could ever possibly want in life. First, the stuff. You got to write the stuff down. You know, where do you want houses, cars, boats, jet skis, planes? I just bought jet skis this last weekend at the Miami Boat Show. So, you know, what stuff do you want? Um, Maybe jewelry, clothes, um, whatever it is. Write that down because there's nothing wrong with wanting that stuff. But then I also want you to write down, and and by the way, if you're analytical, don't stop and analyze it. Just keep writing. You don't want the pen to leave the paper through this process. Um, Write down, you know, maybe um, uh, what you want to do in this lifetime. Like maybe you want to climb mountains. I've got a friend that's climbing every peak over 14,000 right now. Maybe you want to uh, write a book. Maybe you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. I did that six months ago, which I will never freaking do again, but (laughs) I did it. It's off the list. So what do you want to do? Write that down. Um, And then, uh, and take the lid off your brain. Imagine if you write it down, you'll get it, which is not outside the realm of reality. I'll tell you, when I was 18, I knew I wanted to live on the beach, and there's no beach in Denver. And so, you know, but, but I visualized palm trees and the beach and the water and the waves. And 20 years later, I built this really $8 million, 10,000 square foot mansion on the beach. It's at a boathouse on one side and the beach is on the other side. It was called a Gulf to Bay, which was unthinkable when I was 18. So again, take the lid off your brain. Imagine if you write it down, you'll get it. Um, because what it does is it trigger, uh, Andrew, it triggers something called your reticular activating system in your brain, which is that filter that, that it filters out subconsciously thousands of things happening all the time um, to what it thinks you want to focus on. And the best example is when you first buy a car. You don't really notice them. And once you buy the car, it's in there and you see them everywhere. Were they there before? Of course they were. So, so that's your, so, so write it down because it starts that process. Then I want you to write down the things you want to learn. So it's not just the stuff. It's everything you want to do, be, or have. So write down what you want to learn. Maybe you want to learn a foreign language. Um, You know, me, I want to learn how to fly a helicopter. That's on the list. I also want to learn how to play the drums. In fact, a student of mine just sent sent me this tutorial on with uh, sticks and everything on how to play the drums because I've got a drum set. It's been in one of the buildings here in my compound for like two years. My wife bought it for me, and I, I don't even know when in the sticks to use yet, but, he, but I've got, I got that nice gift just in the last couple of days. That's why it's top of mind. But, but anyway, so write down what you want to learn. Um, then lastly, write down who you want to help, okay? We will do more for others than we'll ever do for ourselves. So, so write down what you want to do to help other people. Maybe you want to help your, you know, your family, uh, children. I bought my parents a house here in Florida. I bought them a car, took them on cruises. Who do you want to help? Write that down. And once you can't think of another thing, there's a couple of steps. So you've got this long list of, of things. And by the way, you also want to write down how much money you want in the bank from your real estate investments, say in three years or 10 years. You want to write down how much cash flow you want from your investments, say in three years or 10 years. So don't forget that. But once you're done, it's not real until it's measurable. So I want you to put a number by each goal, how long it's going to take you to achieve it. So put a one, a three, for how many years? A one, a three, a five, a 10, even a 20. Like I said, it took me 20 years to get that house on the beach. Uh, but, but So don't limit yourself. But uh, remember this, as human beings, we'll overestimate what we can do in a year and massively underestimate what we can do in 10 to 20 years, which is why I wanted to give you that house example. Um, once you've got a number by each goal, and don't overthink this. Those of you that are analytical, you're thinking, oh my God, this is going to be a lot. Of, just, just throw a number down. Do the best you can. Once, then I want you to select your number one goal. I mean, that goal, when you get that goal, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. That goal, write that one down. Then I want you to also pick your top three one-year goals and put those on a separate sheet of paper. So you got four goals on a separate sheet of paper. And there's just one more important step. I need you to write down under each goal why it's an absolute must for you to achieve it. Um, And I want you to use emotionally charged words like amazing and beautiful and incredible. And, you know, maybe it's so, so we can have complete freedom. My family and I can have complete freedom so we can do whatever we want, whenever we want, wherever we want, bring whoever we want, whatever it is for you, write down a positive reason so I can show my kids what success looks like. So I can retire my spouse. So I can show my wife or husband what it means to be successful. So what it is, whatever it is, write that down for you, whatever's going to move you because the, because the goal is important. And what we're doing here is we're getting the fuel to take action. Because so many people get caught up by, li- by their own limiting beliefs, which we can dig into if you want, their fears, um, or, their, or, may, or worse, they're comfortable. 
And the comfort zone's a warm place, but nothing freaking grows there. So it's critical that you find this fuel. And again, this is the, what I did when I lost $50 million after, you know, after hiding under a rock for a couple of months. I, get, I gave myself a couple of months and I said, get, get your butt up and get going again. I focused on what I wanted and why I wanted it. So once you've got a positive reason why under each goal, why it's a must, is one tiny little step further. You need to put some pain in there if you don't achieve the goal and make it painful so I don't feel like a failure, so I don't live a life of regret, so I don't fail my wife or, or husband, so I don't fail my children. I'm going to tell you, this is huge because as human beings, we'll do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. And again, this is the fuel, my friends. Okay, now, and let me say something about that. There's a nurse in Australia, uh, a hospice nurse, and so she counseled hospice patients at the end of their lives, and she asked them a question. The question was, do you have any regrets? And she wrote a book about it. It's called The Five Regrets of Dying. And you know what the number one regret was, Andrew? It was not living the life I could have lived, living someone else's life, not doing what I know I was capable of doing. Guys, we don't want that. So do this process so that never happens. Um, and then once you've got, you know, your goals and your whys down, I'll say there's one more step, and that is just get some pictures of your goals. Put them around you. Um, uh, because you can visualize these things into existence. I'll give you a couple examples. A uh, public example, a good one is Jim Carrey. When he was flat broke, he wrote himself a check for $10 million. And he used to look at it and visualize cashing it. And that's how much he made for Dumb and Dumber. You know, Olymp oh, another great one, recent one is, um, oh God, what's her name? Uh, oh God, that singer that just sang at the Super Bowl. She had posted on Instagram 10 years ago that she was going to sing in the Super Bowl. And sure as hell, this last Super Bowl here in the States, she sang at it. And I, for, for life of me, her name's escaping me. But that's another, I'll give you some personal examples. When I was 18, I was a real estate broker. So I was going to, you know, uh, show people houses. So I bought this four-door car, bone ugly. But it was a four-door Granada, bench seat in the front, ugliest freaking thing you've ever seen. And I, I, my, the guy I worked with let me drive his Corvette. And that's a key piece here is if there's something you want, go experience it, go test drive the car, go, go, um, you know, go, go to the open house or the house like the one you want, you know, go experience that, that, that thing you want as much as you can. In fact, I'll give you a great example. Reason I went to the boat show in Miami that I just bought the jet skis at was because, um, I wanted, uh, I, I want to, I, I took my wife to the Amalfi Coast in Italy. I don't know if you've ever been there, but I was is, just there in the summer. Oh, is it freaking amazing or what? Yeah, scary I mean, driving, but spe lovely. <laughs> spe scary driving. It's really scary on a moped, but is it just spectacularly beautiful? I mean, it really moved me. And they have all these yachts there. And I want to get a yacht, either rent or buy one and take it from, you know, Spain all the way down the coast of Italy, back around the, the uh, you know, and, and come up to Greece, Croatia, everything else. So that's my bucket list. So I went to the yacht show because, you know, it's not do as I say, it's do as I do. And I, I went and BS'd my way onto these big yachts and, and, and sat in the captain's chair and visualized my, and laid on the bed and visualized myself owning them because it works. So anyway, I drove that Corvette. I got a picture of a Corvette put it on the visor of my uh, four-door Granada, and within a year, try a beautiful Corvette. And I want to give you a couple other examples, but I want to pre-frame this, all of this, by saying this is not me bragging, because honestly, this stuff doesn't even interest me anymore, but it's great to hopefully inspire you. And that is, so after the Corvette, this is back when the TV show Magnum P.I. was out, and the, um, the, um, Let's see, the actor was Tom Selleck. That's before you were born, probably, Andrew. But, but he, was a, he drove this Ferrari 308, and I thought that was the coolest freaking thing I'd ever seen. So I got a picture of that actual Ferrari out of a magazine. This is way before the internet. And I put that on the visor of my Corvette. So every time I sat at it, there it was right there. Within a year or two, I had a Maserati that looked just like it. Last example, another car example, is I'm the guy that always wanted a Lamborghini. I had pictures of the Lamborghini Coutage posters in my room with the bikinis and the girls washing them and this, yeah, all that. And, and, uh, and, I, and what's interesting is my son collected models of exotic cars and he had a model, the exact same color and style Lamborghini that I ended up buying. So anyway, pictures work. In fact, let me show you something. This is kind of cool. This is my planner. I'm a dinosaur. I use a paper planner. This is today. It's a busy day. In the back of this thing, I've got pictures that I've had in here for 20 years. I'm not exaggerating. They're in plastic. They're all dog-eared. Okay. First pictures are my gratitude pictures. And guys, those of you listening, everything starts 
from a foundation of gratitude. It starts there. So these are the pictures of my kids when they were very young. Then, you know, we get into, uh, now this is crazy. This top picture looks, and I just saw a picture like this. This looks just like the house that I built on the beach before I ever built it. I had the travertine floors. I had 10 foot high glass that was butt together just like that. And what's crazy is look at this bottom picture. Okay. I now live, look behind me. See those, see that wall? Yeah. See the wall in the picture? It's the exact same wall. And this is, and, and I live in a compound now. I've got six buildings. Um, you know, giant main house. I've got uh, a guest house on the water that's beautiful. It's being renovated right now. I've got an exercise facility that's off the chain. I've got a media building with a theater room and a video studio above. And because God, I lost that big house I was telling you about on the beach, I lost that and everything and, and all that debacle. But because God's got a sense of humor, it's literally right behind me across the bay. I can see it every day out my backyard. But, but um, let me show you some other things. So in here, I've got you know, stupid shit like watches. I've got a few hundred thousand dollars worth of watches. Uh, the Lamborghini before I ever bought it. The Rolls Royce, the Bentley, all this stuff that I got because I had pictures. Okay. So please go get pictures of the things that you want. Put them around you. If you looked around my office here now, you'd see the things that matter to me now because it works. All right. Drop the mic. <laughs> I know that was, that was, that was epic. Answer. That was epic. Yeah. That, you know what? We don't get into that nearly enough. Uh, the mindset. It's thing. everything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it really is everything because so many people, they know what to do, but they don't do what they know. And it's, it saddens me. And, and I got to tell you, you come to my three day boot camps. Uh, first of all, they're very inexpensive. I mean, and I'll give your listeners a code to them so they can get a hundred bucks off. Well, don't let me forget to do it. Well, I'll just tell you right now, if they use the code, Andrew, they go to Rod's boot camp, use the code, Andrew, we'll give them a hundred bucks off. Okay. Sounds good. I wanted to make sure we do that. But at my boot camps, I don't just teach you how to buy multifamily. Yes, it's drinking through a fire hose on that. It's incredible. But I also do this mindset because so many people have limiting beliefs. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I got thrown into school when I was six years old. I didn't speak English. I got picked on by bullies. I got chased home by bullies. And my mom, God bless her, she sent me to school in show and tell with wooden shoes from the Dutch wooden shoes and these leather freaking shorts that the Germans wear at Oktoberfest. Of course, I got my beat again. So they chased me. Bullies would chase me home. My wife, my mom would chase them off with a fly swatter. So I got my butt beat again the next day. So I formed this limiting belief that I wasn't good enough. And, you know, you know, and I asked the question, you know, what can I show, how can I show them I'm good enough? And so many people have those, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough money. I'm too young. I'm too old. And so we spend a lot of time on that BS too, because belief systems, the reason, there's a reason the acronym for belief systems is BS because 99% of the time they are. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we do all that at, you know, we get into your identity, we get into all sorts of things to help push you and mm -hmm. pull you to actually take action with what you learn. Anyway, I, I'm yeah. droning on and on. No, that's great, Rod. And, you know, I want to get into some of the specifics because you said, you know, when the, when the whole crash happened, so the mortgage crisis starting in 2007, was that kind of the beginning of the end of the first round of success for you? Well, I had one previously. It wasn't quite as big, but yeah, the big seminar, I call them seminars because they're only a failure if you give up or you don't get the lesson. Okay. And, and, you know, and we fail our way to success. I built 24 businesses. Three have been worth tens of millions of dollars. The other, most of the rest of them have been spectacular flaming seminars, but we fail our way to success. In fact, I just, before I, I, I fully answer your question, um, I, I belong in a mastermind. I belong in several masterminds. Well, one of them, um, Sarah Blakely, the billionaire owner of Spanx, uh, that the women, the women's undergarment company started with $5,000. She got her own jet. She was in Forbes, I think June of last year. She told me, that her dad used to ask her every night at the dinner table, what have you failed at today? Is that an awesome freaking question to ask your kids so to not fear failure? You know, guys, if you're listening, don't fear failure. Fear being in the same place you are now a year from now. So anyway, I forgot your question. But well, about the first, the first failure, well, the right? Because you, so you had it. Let's talk about how it happened. So mm -hmm. I had 800 houses. Two hours that way and two hours, I'm pointing with my arms for those who are on iTunes can't see my arms. Two hours north, two hours south and everywhere along the coast. Yeah. Okay. 800 houses. Are you on the Gulf Coast? Multiple, pardon me? Gulf Coast or I'm Atlantic on the Gulf coast? coast of Florida. Yep. I'm okay. in Sarasota, Florida. Okay. Um, yeah. That picture behind me, it's a green screen, but it's, you know, can see my, 
It's a green screen. Oh, those oh. are thank you cards okay. for my students back there. But that's my backyard. I, I live, okay. like I said, I live in a compound. It's spectacular. I'm, I like it better than the house I built on the beach. But anyway, so, um, so the reason I failed, the reason I crashed and burned in 08, because let me tell you something. This is going to blow your mind. I was at a 30% loan to value. Wow. I only owe 30 cents on the dollar. This, this will also blow your mind. I went upside down. That's how far it crashed here. Okay. So, so but let me tell you why, why I, I wrote a book about this. It's, um, and I've given away 20,000 copies. Um, and the subtitle is The New Rules of Real Estate Investing. I gave away 20,000 copies and finally my team's like, hey, stupid, let's put it on Amazon and actually make some money. So now it's on Amazon. It's a bestseller in three categories. But but the, the subtitle is the new rules of real estate investing, i.e. the new rules are forget value, focus on cash flow. And I wasn't focused on cash flow. Because I was along the Gulf Coast, a lot of my properties had wind and flood insurance, which impacts what? Cash flow. Taxes here. We have no state income tax in Florida. So the property taxes are much higher, which impacts what? Cash flow. But the big thing was if I had a maintenance issue at one of my apartment complexes, all the part, everything is the same. The plumbing parts are the same. You can stockpile the guts for plumbing parts. The, the, the bathroom's the same. The, the HVAC is the same. The appliances are the same. The locks are the same. So you can stockpile parts. So I can send a maintenance guy there. He's in and out in an hour. If I had to send somebody to one of my houses that's an hour and a half away, which was, there were a bunch an hour and a half away, they'd have to get there, assess what's wrong because every house is different. Then they'd have mm -hmm. to go find a Home Depot or a Lowe's where we, you know, where we have accounts, which could be another hour round trip. And then, you know, if you've ever fixed anything around your house, you know, you get started and you're like, oh shit, I got to go back and I forgot that. And, and you end up, it takes all day. And so, so what took an hour in my apartment complexes took all day at one of my 800 houses. And you multiply that, that was huge because it, 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 it was just too expensive to manage. But the, the, the coup de grace was most of my, I had C class properties and a lot of my tenants were in retail or they were contractors. I mean, working for contractors, plumbers, electricians, drywallers, HVAC, painters, which fell off a cliff in 2008. Okay. So they, they so were your tenants. You had commercial they were my tenants. tenants and they, they had no work anymore. So, so that was, that was, that was the, but when I, you know, I, I held on, I held on. And then when I went upside down in value, I'm like, screw it. And it was painful, man. Cause uh, you know, I thought I was set for life, but again, the reason I was able to recover from that, some people don't recover from losing 50 million bucks back in the twenties, people jumped out of buildings. Okay. In the great depression. But luckily you know, I was, I was in the Tony Robbins environment. I've, I've, I've been around him for 20 years, following him around the planet. I can God, hear that in you and in, in what you say. I can hear yeah, him. Yeah. I, let me tell a quick story about that. Cause it's really, mm -hmm. it's relative. So, um, cause it relates to goals. I don't want to miss this. So back in, what was this? Um, well, I built the house. I think we finished in 2000. So more than 20 years ago. Two months after I moved in, I worked for this house for 20 years, okay? Now, now, to give you an idea of this house, okay, there was a giant waterfall out of the second floor balcony into the pool. I mean, again, 80 feet of glass that was 10 feet high, all butt together. I was like I was living on the bay. I could lay in bed, look one way and see the beach and look the other way and see the bay, okay? I'm a spectacular home. I'll land the plane with this. On the second floor, there was a 20 foot aquarium that curved around this giant spiral staircase that went up through the whole house. And the second floor, it was visible on both sides. The aquarium cost me, I don't think, think $170,000. So that gives you an idea of the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, two months after I move in, I'm floating in the pool and I got depressed. And I don't mean just feeling a little down. I mean, I was freaking bummed. And when I look back on it, I realized there were three things happening. Number one is it's never about the goals. You need the goals to, to propel you and, and compel you and, you know, motivate you and push you and pull you. But it's never about the goals. It's about two things. One, who we become on our path to the goals. But it's also the fact that we're not happy unless we're progressing and growing. And it's like, what the hell do I do now? I've just achieved success times a thousand. And, and I didn't know what I was going to do next. You know, like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish. I didn't have a vision for the future. So that was number one. But the second more important piece, this is one I want to share with your listeners, is I had been totally focused on Rod, okay? It was show the world I'm good enough. Show the world I matter. That's why I built this giant testament to my ego. It's the truth of it, okay? Sometimes embarrassing for me to admit that, but, but that's the truth of it. I, I had to, you know, so it was all about Rod, 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 Rod. Show the world I matter. Show the world, you know, I'm good enough. And 
luckily that year I came across one of Tony's books. I started reading it. I think it was Unleash the Power Within. And I went to his first boot camp and I found out he fed families for the holidays. And I'm like, what a concept. Do something for someone else. Yeah, it was 40, but it took me to 40 to get that memo. And so I went back and I fed five families. Um, I found, you know, called a church, said, who really needs help? And we did it for Thanksgiving. So I got frozen turkeys. We found out if they had kids, we got toys for the kids, big boxes of food. And the third family changed my life. I, I mean, it came, went up to this house and this lady um, came out. She saw the food and this wasn't even a house. It was like a studio house. It was like, I don't know if you have these in Canada, but it was like this house, you walk into the living room, you walk through the bedroom to get to the kitchen, which has the bathroom off of it. So it's not even a one bedroom really, because you got to walk through the bedroom to get to the kitchen. And anyway, she comes out, she got five kids living here. The, the old, she starts crying, the older kids start crying, I start crying, and I'm hooked. And I'm blessed to say we have now benefited over 75,000 children here in Sarasota and, and Bradenton. We did the first one in Denver, but since then I moved here and, and we did them all here. I had a house in Denver and a house in, in Florida for a while, but you know, we've done thousands and thousands of, of baskets. We call it. It, it. I've modeled Tony does a basket brigade. I modeled his basket brigade. We've also done tens of thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies to give the local children. We've done tens of thousands of teddy bears to give to the police departments for their officers to keep in a vehicle if they encounter a child that's been traumatized. And I will tell you, that's been my greatest gift in life because there's a different difference between achievement and fulfillment. You know, as I was telling you before we started recording, my, my podcast is about to hit 8 million downloads and I've interviewed billionaires on the show, people with, you know, mega, mega millionaires. And I can tell if they're like I was back then because I recognize them and I feel sorry for them because I'm going to tell you that success without that piece is not success. So if you're listening mm -hmm. and you're young and you've got blood dripping from your teeth and you freaking want this real estate thing bad, I'm here to tell you, start giving back now because not only will you feel better, but you will achieve that success faster. The universe moves, power moves, if you, God, whatever you believe, the, the power moves to those that serve and help other people. It's just a, it's a fact, trust me on it. Um, and so start giving back. You don't have to do anything as grandiose as I did. Help a family, help an elderly person, do something for the community, for the environment, for, adult, for animals, whatever it is, pick something that juices you, that can even make you emotional if you help someone and it'll add a richness to your life. And I promise you, you will achieve that success you want faster. That's amazing, Rod. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing that. My pleasure. Um, so you said that that kind of mind shift came to you at 40. Does that, does that place you right in and around that 2007, eight uh, crash or was it did you have the mind shift before that crash? No, I had the shift before then. Yeah, no, I okay. had the shift before then for sure because I'd been following Tony and that's the reason I was able to recover. By the way, if you haven't seen Tony Robbins, have you seen him live, Andrew? I don't believe I have, no. Oh, okay. Well, if you, if you can see him, just do it. Trust me on that. You'll be glad you did. Uh, he may not speak forever. But no, I, I just followed him around, did several of his events a year. Um, you know, I never did college. Like I said, I, when my mom told me she made 20 grand on that house, I'm like, screw college. I'm going to do this. But I took a picture Darn it, I wish I'd have loaded it so I could sh screen share and show it to you. But I took a picture of my arms out like this with hundreds of lanyards around me, hanging on my arms, around my neck, literally probably 300 events that I've gone to, boot camps that I've gone to, because I'm continually, you know, learning is earning, guys. You got to continue to be learning. I remember my son asking me when he was nine years old, because I was telling him I was going to a real estate boot camp and I already had 2,000 houses. He's like, why are you going to learn about real estate? And here's why, because we are always learning and growing. And that's why I kept going back to Tony events, because you're always working on a different part of yourself. Uh, and uh, anyway, of course, I was standing in front of my cool cars when I did, had the lanyards there. And I, I posed the question in my Facebook group. You know, I have this, by the way, I have the largest Facebook group on multifamily investing in the world now. It's uh, about to hit 32, it'll hit 32,000 today, actually. Today's the day. Um, and so if your listeners are interested in multifamily, go to multifamilycommunity.com and it's a direct link to that Facebook group. And, and, uh, and it, we don't allow any promotion at all, which is why it's grown so big. It's all about education. So it's really awesome. Um, in fact, while I'm thinking about it, if, if, if you're listening and you're interested in multifamily, of course, come, come to my boot camp, Rod's boot camp, use Andrew for hundred bucks off. But because I don't give my book away anymore, I created an alternative and I've got this, this, it's called the multifamily property tool book. It's 70 pages. There's no fluff, nothing in here to sell you. It's just, it is like, if you're interested in multifamily, not, this is not for houses. It's just for multifamily. Mm -hmm. If you're but a duplex, triplex applies. 
If you're interested in multifamily, get this thing because it's got every possible question you would ever want to ask as part of your due diligence. It's like a due diligence checklist on steroids. And if you text the word ROD to 41411, I'll give it to you for free. Just just uh, text ROD to 41411 and it's yours. But you just full of the value today, Rod. Well, I'm trying to help your listeners, brother. I appreciate I'm, I'm that. Really no, I appreciate impressed it. With, I'm really impressed with what you've done with your podcast with, you know, you told me I'm episode 58. That's very impressive. So you're obviously yeah. adding a ton of value. Well, we're moving it along. And I love what you said about giving back. You know, I think this thing's been a big thing for me. I kind of got bored with what I'd accomplished and, and kind of irritated with some of the process. And I just wanted to like, I don't know. I just felt like giving back in this way was that it's fun. Get to talk about real estate and, and it helps people. Let me say something to you. That's how I started my podcast. In fact, it's kind of funny. I used to say, I'll never sell you anything because I never meant to. I, but when I hit a million downloads, I'm like, okay, shoot, I better do something with this and monetize it. So I created the yeah. course and coaching and the live events and I'm freaking loving it. I mean, let me show you behind me here. You know, there's some of the hundreds of thank you cards that I've gotten in the mail and I mean, I, I worked, it's, it's Monday today. I worked 12 hours yesterday, but I freaking love what I'm doing. And that's another thing, guys, if you're listening and you don't love real estate, either learn to love it yeah. or for God's sakes, go do something else. Life is too short because for you to do for specifically multifamily, well, forget it. Any real estate, you need to be able to inspire other people, investors, potentially sellers. To, you know, you need to be able to influence them. And the only way to influence them is to inspire them. And the only way to inspire them is if you're passionate. And the only way to be passionate is if you love what you're doing. Absolutely. Critical. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that, that's what I love about this. And I, I actually host meetups and, and we yeah, do that kind of fantastic. thing. And people come out, you know, who wouldn't want to talk about what you, what you enjoy doing? Now, I actually specifically do love that you're into multifamily because for us, that's like the golden goose down here. Um, we have the challenge in our market and I'd love to get your thoughts. We're, you know, we're in a, a market where you mean got houses, this, your country. Well, no, not like I'm near Toronto. So uh, in our specific market, it's, you know, we've got million dollar houses. We've got, uh, you know, that's that's starting like in the town I'm in, uh, you know, a bungalow will go for eight hundred thousand to a million dollars. So uh, pretty pricey. The multifamilies, people are pushing the cap rates down and down and down. Like we're, we're seeing stuff trade at 3%, 4%, uh, you know, with work to be done. These are, these are properties that need work and you, you hope you can get it, get it up. And then we've got very landlord, uh, well, tenant friendly uh, laws that, that protect our tenants. So um, I'm curious. In a, so here's in a market what I'll tell you. Here's what <laughs> yeah. I tell you. Don't buy there. Don't okay. buy there. The beautiful thing about this, this environment, I mean, when I was your age, I'm sorry, I'm 60. Okay. So, so I can say that, but, but when I, 30 years ago, there was no internet. Okay. So if you wanted to see what was for sale, you got this book in the mail, an MLS book. Okay. That's how it used to be done. And <laughs> we live in such an incredible time right now, Andrew, that you can do the bulk of, you get my due diligence checklist mm -hmm. and you get online and you make some phone calls and I won't go look at an asset that I'm buying until it's under contract. I won't get in a plane and spend the money because I can do all the advanced work without being there. I can go sure. on Google earth and drive down the street and you know, look at the cars in the parking lot and drive down to the main intersection and, and look around. And if yes. there's a, a pawn shop and a liquor store and a strip club, that's a clue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that I'm yeah. going to avoid that place. So, so the point is you can do so much of that. So get out of Toronto. There's so many, uh, you know, markets in the States. Now everywhere is hot. So you're going to, I mean, we're kissing about 250 frogs to find one deal right now. Yeah. Um, but, what are your and, but prime we've markets? got 800 doors under contract right now. I've got a phenomenal deal here in, in my backyard in Sarasota mm -hmm. that we're doing a webinar on tonight. But, you know, if, if, if you've got any accredited investors listening and you guys are interested in, in checking out what we're doing, text the word partner to 41411. Because like I say, we have 800 doors and I'm extremely conservative because of what happened to me. Obviously, I got my butt handed mm -hmm. to me. So, you know, um, if, if you're accredited, check us out, uh, partner to 41411. But the point is, we're looking at a lot of deals to find a few right now. And that's just the way it is. But mm -hmm. the plus side is if you're learning this business right now, you come to one of my boot camps or, or, or listen to Andrew's podcast, listen to my podcast, and you're learning this business, it's the perfect time to learn. Because if you mm -hmm. listen to enough of my podcasts and, and, you, and you start to pay attention, the guys that have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 doors, almost all of them started in 09, 10, and 11. Right. That's what we call a clue. Okay. So, so 
you know, the, the fact is there's going to be incredible opportunity. So if you're learning this business now and you build a relationships with brokers and potential investors and, and you have access to money and, and you, you, you understand the business well enough so you're not intimidated by it, when this market contracts, everything goes up and down. I mean, I've been through, I don't know, four or five of these cycles. Four, no, I'm exaggerating. I've been through three big cycles. I, mm-hmm. I think of, there was a small fourth blip. But, um, you know, what goes up comes down. And if Trump gets reelected, we'll probably kick the can down the curb a little further. But if not, it's going to happen right away. If he does, then, then it, it may be a couple more years or, or, or maybe even four more years before it happens. But it's going to happen. This real estate is going to contract again, no question. So that said, perfect time to learn the business so you can capitalize on it when it does, or if you've got access to yeah. money. Yeah, you want to be ready to strike when the opportunity reveals itself. And and of course, when things are down, that's that's when it gets really good. And I can, yeah, I can say my mother-in-law actually bought in Florida, in Naples, and uh, she did that. And- Naples, is, Naples is nice. Uh, yeah. We have a joke, though. Old people live in Tampa and their parents live in Naples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can kind it's of agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny at Christmas we go down there and, and uh, you know, their their grandkids are the ones that are out at the bars, uh, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah, yeah, partying, yeah, yeah, having yeah. drinks. Go, go to a restaurant. You're the youngest by about 40 years. And this is yeah. when I first moved here 20 years ago. But, but great market. I mean, she's seen just by oh, buying it, it, you know, doubling in price pretty much. Oh, since we've, then. we've got this. We've got this asset in Bradenton, which is connected to Sarasota here. And mm-hmm. it's it's phenomenal. It's it's 92 doors. It's smaller than we normally buy. We like to go 150 plus, but we could, I mean, to get another, we've got an asset here already to get another one here. It was kind of a no brainer. There's a lot of development mm-hmm. going on. Honestly, it's pretty hard to go wrong in Florida, period. Uh, there's 80 million baby boomers getting old and getting cold. And, uh, you know, Florida and Arizona and Nevada, I mean, those are home runs. There's no question real estate's going to go up any way you shake it. That that kind of a demographical impact is, is unavoidable. So for, for investors that are active right now, uh, knowing that they don't want to just stop, um, and I didn't want to either, but our market's going crazy too. And I, I took a step back and I said, this doesn't meet my cash flow goals. This doesn't meet my criteria. So I took a little step back and I'm more focused on my podcast and, and scouting out good deals. What do you recommend for people? Is it is it just... Well, let's see. Toronto is just north of what U.S. city? Um, we're just north. That's not a great, uh, it, we're, we're basically west of Buffalo by about 45 minutes to okay, an hour. Man, that tells me enough. That tells me enough. Hang on. Let me look at my U S map here. I mean, Indiana's got opportunity. Illinois has got opportunity. We've got several assets in Ohio. We're killing it in Ohio. We've I've got been invested a big in asset. Ohio. We're buying in Cincinnati, 280 doors. We've got an asset in Beaver Creek, Ohio, 101 doors. We're raising the rents $500. That's yeah. a $10 million increase in value the minute we're done to give you an idea of what's possible okay. in this exciting business that we're in. Why do you like the economics of a market like that? Tell me that. Okay. What you look for when you're looking at a sub market, so you want to evaluate a sub market, write these website addresses down. One of them is bestplaces.net. Another one is city-data.com. You can also use census.gov. You're looking for three things to be historically rising. Population, median income and jobs. What's the most important? Jobs. You want to make sure that that market is not a one horse town. There cannot be one big employer. There have to be multiple employers, diverse employment base. Now me, because of what happened to me, I look for, I look for industries in the employment base that are recession resistant. For example, in Beaver Creek, there is a military base, which scares me normally, but this particular base is, is a research facility for technology. You think it's going anywhere? Not a chance. Okay. No. So then, then there's higher education there. There's, there's colleges there. There's, um, there's uh, uh, healthcare, big hospital facilities. Those are larger employers in this particular mm-hmm. submarket of Beaver Creek, Ohio. And so I know it's golden. Okay. But that's what I look for. You know, I don't want to see a lot of retail, for example, uh, cause that suffers in a contraction. Um, you know, so I look, I look at the different types of industries. I look for lots of diversity and I look for those three big things to be growing. And, um, and, and don't be intimidated by this, guys. Those of you listening, you get on those websites, you'll see it's pretty easy when you start playing around in it. And that's the operative word, pretend you're playing. Associate pleasure to it. If you're not that technical, just get in there and play around and you'll see it's not intimidating and it's pretty easy to figure out these trends. And then you want to become, honestly, once you select a sub-market that you're interested in, you want to become an expert in it. You want to put in a Google alert that anytime something, an article shows up about Sarasota, Florida, 
You want to know what's going on there so you can spout off the 10 exciting things about that market when you're doing the presentation. Like, like, like I said, I, know that, I don't know when this is going to air, but we're doing a presentation tonight on that Bradenton asset. And so we're going to talk about why we like Bradenton. We're going to talk about why we like that particular asset. And we're going to go through all this demographical information. Um, and if you listen to this podcast, if you text the word partner to 41411, we have all these webinars that we've done. So you can see how we present a deal, even if you're not accredited. You can see how we present a deal so you can educate yourself on the things you need to learn about that whatever market you're interested in. So yeah, do that and, and watch the historical webinar. Um, or we'll have, we've got deals stacked up right now. So we'll have another deal going that you can watch a current one as well. But uh, anyway. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Okay, so so to step back into the economics and, and, and the piece you just gave there about showing how you present a deal is going to be useful to a lot of people. So uh, guys, definitely take a look at that. Um, but uh, just knowing the economics, I love what you said there, stuff that's not going anywhere. For me, I've always thought the same healthcare uh, education. I'm a big student rental investor. I like that because economy's up, economy's down. People go to school, go to school. Um, or, I, or I want to be in the town that's got the school, got the healthcare, got, you know, five or six different corporate head offices. The, the, on, the only thing I would say to you about student housing is, mm -hmm. is, is it's going to go great for a few more years, but you really, I would recommend you read Harry Dent's um, books on the impact of population because um, I remember going to an event in Vancouver of all places mm -hmm. actually but this has been a long time ago and he talked about how because of the 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 population surges based on baby boomers baby boomers children gen X um, um, I, he th he estimates that at some point school um, attendance is going to drop drastically. And so, mm -hmm. so I would say, you know, if you're in student housing and I've got friends that have thousands of student housing doors in my mastermind, I've got the largest multifamily mastermind really now on the planet. It's called the multifamily boardroom. There's about, I think almost 7 billion in assets in there now, but one of them is a big student housing guy. And in, in, and really the, the, the game plan is to be out before any, any, you start seeing those drops happen to get out and get out quickly because you're relying on that income. Well, but, uh, so that's one of the reasons I like going into a, a market where your student housing could set technically be um, regular family housing as well. Oh, if, the, if you've got that as a set, as an alternative exit strategy, you're golden. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I've liked. I've been kind of spoiled here. Uh, you know, our markets are like that. We've got, a, you know, a few cities that are just excellent for that. But uh, yeah, I'm looking at, at markets in the States to uh, West VU or West Virginia University. Um, you know, not not really a place that people are going to want to go with their families. But I mean, a huge opportunity for for student rentals right now. OK, as long as again, as long as that alternate exit strategy is there or you plan to get in and out in a few years. Um, yeah, I don't I think just, the alternate is there. Okay, well then I, w I would just be careful with that. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, who knows? I could be all wrong. Harry Dent could be all wrong, but but it was compelling the mm -hmm. the the argument that he proposed. So forewarned. Is I'm forearm. interested. I'm interested in seeing his perspective. Definitely, uh, I'll definitely check that out. He's got uh, several best-selling books. I got to meet him at another mastermind that I yeah. was at. Guys, if you're not in a mastermind, for God's mm -hmm. sakes, create one. Yeah. You know, again, I created my multifamily boardroom. I'm in several others because, like Napoleon Hill said in his book Think and Grow Rich, when two like minds get together mm -hmm. and they have the same focus he calls it a definiteness of purpose they have the same focus they want the same things they create this third intangible third mind that's greater than the sum of the parts so get together go to meetups like andrew's meetup if you're in his backyard go to meetups and meet like-minded people because incredible things happen when you do yeah well said and i could yeah we've read a lot of the same books i, I appreciate how you're you're doing that and, and guys like if you're not familiar with the mastermind you know napoleon hills think and grow rich definitely give it a give it a read or a listen as i like to do actually give it a read a couple times a year it's that i get yeah. i've given away thousands of copies of that book it's not a book you read once yeah i i, I refresh literally a couple times a year because yeah. there's so many incredible distinctions in there give me your top uh your top five what are the the most game changing distinctions uh, no, top five, you know, proper uh, books, books that are going to make a difference. Yeah, yeah I, I, I give, um, I, my love language is gifts. If you haven't read the five languages of love, I know that's foofy for a real estate show, but I'm going to tell right. you if you love anybody, read that freaking book. Okay. But my love language is gifts. I love to give gifts. And so my students get a lot of gifts for me. Let's see the first, one of the first books they get is a book called Turning Pro from Pressman. It's, it's about stop operating as an amateur, operate as a professional, you know, Kobe Bryant, Mm -hmm. was a professional. Okay. Uh, become a professional. Another one is the slight edge about those little decisions yep. you make every day that traject your life up or down. Okay. Um, 
I love uh, Gary Keller's One Thing is fantastic book. Um, Traction, I, I just implemented, if you've got a business, I just implemented EOS in both of uh, both the businesses that I run now. It's awesome. It's a system for business development. Uh, let's see. Who, who writes Traction? Because I think uh, Traction I have. Traction was written by a guy named Wickman. Yeah, Gino Wickman. Wickman. Gino incredible Wickman. book. Uh, an incredible process for, again, taking a business and ramping it. There was a pre precursor to this called um, The Rockefeller Habits, another book that's awesome for, you know, how, you know coming up with your core values, mm -hmm. coming up with your mission statement, and then having effective meetings that really push your company forward and gain, you gain traction. Um, let's see, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big, believe it or not, uh, Jack Canfield's mm -hmm. book about thinking big is awesome. Um, of course, Think and Grow Rich, if you're in the real estate, I'm not Think and Grow Rich, I'm sorry, um, uh, Kiyosaki's book, um, Rich, oh, Rich Dad, Dad, Poor Dad. Dad, all of his books are fantastic. He's, he's done a masterful job with his books. Yeah, Not absolutely. enough. I can keep thinking here. No, no, that's good. That's good. I've, several of those are familiar to me and, and will be familiar to our, our listeners. But there's some that that aren't, um, you know, Gary Keller. I've been on the fence with with some of his. I've got uh, his one book. Um, the one thing. I don't have one thing. Oh, well, I have uh, I have book. the real estate millionaire one. Get, get that book, okay? That, that yeah. that's just a simple strategy. It's very compelling. So it's not realtor him, specific. By the way, I just heard him interviewed on Tim Ferriss. He's he never does interviews. Brilliant guy, Gary Keller. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was blown away by what was coming out of his mouth. Um, but uh, um, and by the way, let me give you another strategy. You know, I talk about the importance of focus. How focus is everything. Focus is power. In fact, on my wall back here, you'll see I am determination. I am focus. I am execution. Anything you put the words I am in front of, by the way, is an mm -hmm. identity statement. There's no greater force in the human psyche than the need to remain consistent with how we identify ourselves. So I've got mm -hmm. I am focus because focus is so important. Well, I listen to Tim Ferriss. You know, I'm excited. I'm about to hit 8 million downloads on my podcast. He gets more than that a month. So that gives you an idea of the, the, the what he does is he deconstructs world-class performers. Across all walks of life, actors, Jamie Foxx, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Ray Dalio, billionaires, CEOs, you name it. I mean, the best and the best of what they do. He deconstructs. And I noticed a pattern. And that pattern is they all freaking meditate. Yep. And what does meditation do? It enhances your focus. So just another little tip there. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been implementing my little morning ritual where I do a little meditation, affirmations, visualization. So I liked your, your, uh, your little book and planner idea there and let, having let the me, pictures let me right share in my morning. Let me share my morning if you'll allow yeah, me. Yeah, uh, please okay, do. So, so it takes, it'll take two minutes and I do it in five minutes. So first thing I do is I'm, I do gratitude for the things that I have in my life. My beautiful wife, she's off the charts beautiful and even more beautiful on the inside. My, my kids, my, my coaching students, my foundation. But then I'll do gratitude for the things that I want is if I already have them. And I've got my vision boards right here. Um, first board's my gratitude board with my kids. You know, like yeah, I gave my, my brother a uh, Rolex, a picture of that, my foundation. But then there's the vision boards for the things that I want because, you know, I, I need to see the pictures. I'm real visual. So I see the pictures of the things that I want. I visualize if I already have them. Sometimes I get emotion, emotional over things I don't even have yet because I'm doing thank you, God. And, and, I've, and guys, I'm, I'm sure I lost some of you analytical ones with this, but I'm telling you that would be a mistake because this mm -hmm. stuff freaking works. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I don't mind it at all because we've done so much technical. So our, uh, our listeners uh, should eat this up. This, this really is, uh, this really is a, an exceptional well, conversation. Let me say this. Let me say this. If you're, if you're just into single family, which is cool, I hope you'll get into multi because it's so much yeah. easier. I've had 2000 houses, so I feel like I can speak credibly about it. But mm -hmm. if you're um, into um, anything, frankly, even if it's not real estate, check out my podcast because every week I do an interview, but I also do a clip called Own Your Power about mindset, about psychology, about really owning your power. And I think that's why I've had such incredible success with it. And they're only yeah. three to five minutes. So if you want to be pumped up, there's lots of great stuff out there, but I think you'd enjoy my podcast. It's like called Lifetime Cash Flow. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I'll definitely check that out myself. Now, just getting into some uh, some uh, specifics about your mindset, just in a real short form uh, answer. When you you already had your mindset in the right place, so when everything came crashing down, it made you a lot more careful. I've had a similar experience, but way lower scale. Mm -hmm. um, was there a moment of just absolutely feeling broken, but you just shook it off and got going again, or or did it take I'll, I'll a bit longer? I'll share a moment on a previous seminar that I had. Yeah. So I had, I don't know how much time we have. In fact, let me look. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Um, 
I, at my first seminar, they don't, I don't talk, I talk about it in my live event, but very rarely publicly like this, um, is, you know, I had, I was buying and selling houses. And as I said, I built 24 businesses and I had a couple frozen yogurt shops and I was buying and selling houses and the market crashed for the first time. And I lost everything for the first time. My house got foreclosed mm-hmm. on back then. And, and I remember, and I had a Rolls Royce, I had a Maserati back then, I had a Pantera, I I don't know if you know what that is, awesome freaking Ford car, beautiful, Um, but you know, I I had had all the stuff, I lived in the equivalent of a million dollar house and I lost everything, and actually the cars, I sold the cars, but I, I lost the house, but the point I'm making is is I had to paint houses to have enough money to eat, okay, after this. So I went from, and, and, and the real thing is, I remember my mom bringing me a bag of groceries because she was worried about me. So I went from million dollar house, Rolls Royce, Maserati, Pantera, to mom bringing me freaking groceries, okay? So I remember I was painting this house. You asked me about this moment, so this moment stuck in my head for this. I was painting this house, and I'm like, and I start crying, and I'm like, fuck this, and I pulled, and I'm like, and I threw the down. I never went back and I'm never, you know, I, I stopped and I, and that's, I got myself back up and I bought 500 houses in that next round. So that was an yeah. epiphany for me moment with the big crash. I kind of hit under a rock for a couple of months. I don't know that there was one pivotal moment, but I, I, I mean, I had to shake myself off a few times and I, and I was using that as a story too. Mm-hmm. A lot of people will use, will, will tell a story as a circuit breaker, you know, and, and I was using the fact that I lost $50 million as my story. And, 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 and we use that so we don't get disgusted with ourselves. And, and guys, I would tell you, be very careful if you're telling yourself stories or telling other people's stories to, to let yourself off the hook. You know, and again, sometimes it's, I'm not, I'm not old enough. I'm not young enough. I don't yeah. have enough money. I'm not smart enough. For me, it was, I'm not analytical enough. And whatever it is, be very careful of your stories. But, uh, you know, I just picked myself back up, paid attention to that, and, um, mm-hmm. and boom. Awesome. Okay, now one, just for our analytical-minded people, uh, analytically, what are you looking for? What's a good deal, a good cap rate to you? I mean, yeah, assuming sure, sure. you found on your our, market. On our deals, yeah. on our multifamily assets, um, we have some parameters. Um, uh, one of them that we, we don't budge on is we need to see an annualized cash-on-cash cash return of at least 10%. So 10% on our money every year. And now now annualized over a five-year period. If the first couple of years, if we're doing a reposition, it might be a little less but then we've Mm -hmm. got to make it up in the remaining years. We also look for an IRR, internal rate of return, total return on the deal, ideally around 20%. Okay. And then um, lastly, we do a lot of stress testing. And and stress testing meaning what happens just in case. So like one of our stress tests is we need to be able to break even day one at 25% vacant. Then, Then typically our model is we will refinance in year three, and or year five to get our investors all or most of their money back and they stay in the deal. But then um, um, we have to be able to break even at 30% vacant year five after the, oh, okay. after the additional debt. So those are a couple of stress tests. We always put six months operating reserves in the bank. That's, that's sacrosanct. Sometimes more depending upon the asset class. Uh, we've got an asset in Louisiana. We put a million dollars in the bank. And it's really lucky we did, honestly, on that one because the, the vacancy dropped quite a bit further than we'd expected. But to give you an idea of why, why this is so exciting, that particular asset was 70% occupied when we bought it. It's 403 doors. We get it to 90%. We've made eight or nine million bucks like that overnight. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's why we love this business because it's the value is all triggered by a multiple of the net income. It's called the NOI, net operating mm-hmm. income. And so, you know, and, and that, and you can't do that with residential multifamily, you know, duplex, triplex, fourplex. It's got to be larger multifamily to be able to do that. Yeah. That's the beautiful part. You just increase the income, you increase the value, and then you get rich. Increase and- income, decrease expenses, anything that affects the bottom line, boom. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what kind of asset class are you aiming to to end up at? I know you're probably buying at a mix, but where are you buying and where are you trying I to only take buy them to? Multifamily. No, so, no. I mean, I mean, sorry if you, oh, if you call them class a type like A yeah, B C D. A B C D. Um, I I I I bought that Louisiana asset. I probably wouldn't. I won't. It was like a C C minus. We're gonna turn it into a C plus. It's we will not be a B, <laughs> but. The other assets we buy, we typically bump them up an asset class based on the work that we do. That Beaver Creek asset was a B, it's going to be an A. We've got an asset in Dallas that was a B, it's going to be an A. Um, Cincinnati is going to go from a C plus to a B. 
Um, you know, so, so we typically okay. try to get them up an asset class. I don't buy in the hood anymore. And I tell people, don't buy D properties. Yes, the cash flow looks great, but I've had people killed in front of my houses, behind my houses, in my houses, around my houses, in apartments. You don't want that brain damage. No. And, and, you know, I remember I bought uh, almost a whole block in Denver at one time and they, they, they put concrete pylons at the end of the street to slow down the drug traffic. Not stop it, just slow it down a little bit. I, I remember, I, remember I, I went to a house that we'd evicted somebody and there was a hole cut in the front door to pass the crack through. Okay, you don't want that brain damage. Just trust me on that. Yeah. Yeah, on a smaller scale, I can definitely relate. Just having bought houses that I, you know, I would never buy again today. Structurally weren't great, weren't in the neighborhoods I wanted. You know, it's just not worth it. It won't. Not. It won't fit well in your your daily life. It, well, you know, the it, problems it'll, it'll that come impact. up. It'll take so much of your time. It'll yeah. slow down your progression. Absolutely. So, so I see a lot of people getting started, Rod, and I love that you brought that up. That are jumping into any deal they can do, and I hear people out there giving advice saying, "Go out and just do a deal." And I, I can't say that I one hundred percent agree with that because. Right having that was my that was my approach and it hurt one hell of a lot for sure it really got me into trouble so do you recommend that like that'd be a great final final statement here uh what do you think is more important just starting with the education getting you know or getting oh, involved no and taking action i've made every mistake you can possibly make why 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 go through that uh, you mm -hmm. can come to one of my boot camps for about i think with the 100 bucks off it's like 200 dollars for three days it's just me i don't bring in like everybody else brings in outside speakers to sell you crap mm -hmm. that's not me it's me for all three days it kills me i face plant for a couple days after the event but yeah. but it's me for three days and so educate yourself whether you come yeah. see me or not educate yourself because don't be a dabbler if you dabble you're gonna get your butt kicked ask me how I know in fact yes. I have t-shirts now that say ask me how I know because I've, I've I talk about all these seminars that I've had yeah. every mistake I've made and and so uh, I literally I have t somebody gave me a t-shirt that said that. I'm like that's really funny so now we have our own that say ask me how I know anyway but Broad. the point is, educate yeah. yourself for yeah. God's sakes. It doesn't take that long. And, and, and that way you avoid mistakes. And more importantly, you shorten your time frame. You don't want to take 10 years to build your, 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 your dream life. You can do it in three, but you, you, need, you need a mentor or coach. So find somebody in your local market. Come see me, whatever, mm -hmm. Andrew, whatever. But, but the point is, is get help because it, it's, it makes it so much faster, so much easier with so much less brain damage. Well said. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Where do you yeah, want so me to again, send if people? The, if you guys want to go to the boot camp, I'll give you a hundred bucks off. Use the name Andrew, rodsbootcamp.com. If uh, join my multifamily community, it's multifamilycommunity.com on Facebook. It's awesome. Like I said, we're going to hit 32,000 today. Um, if you want my tool book, 70 pages, due diligence checklist on steroids, just text ROD to 41411. Let's see, what else did I say on this show? If you're an accredited investor or you want to just see how we present a deal, text partner to 41411. You really appreciate that. And um, yeah, and if you, it, I've got tons of resources on my website. It's called rodcleef.com. I've got books, videos, articles okay. that I've written and curated. I mean, there's so much free content there. So definitely go to rodcleef.com awesome. and absorb that as well. Okay, I'll put that information in the show notes and uh, make sure it's available for everyone. And uh, yeah, I want to really thank you for uh, for coming on. Um, just a real Pleasure. quick quick question about you personally. Where's your, your next vacation spot? Just so people know where your head's at. I'm actually going to a mastermind in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Yeah, that's yeah. that's I think that's the next one for vacation. I'm going to see assets in between there. I'm pretty sure that's the next vacation. Yeah. So a little bit of work and vacation uh, mix. It'll be fun. They only want yeah. me to speak for an hour and then I'm yeah. in I'm in my ties and bathing suit. So sounds wonderful. I'll join you. <laughs> all right, all Rod. Right, all right. Take <laughs> Thanks, care, man. my friend. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. Thanks for watching today's episode. Just a friendly reminder to please rate and review this podcast on iTunes. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you smash the like and subscribe and notification bell. Uh, and also leave a comment. And hey, while you're at it, why not share this episode with somebody you think it could help? It helps this podcast grow and I would really appreciate it. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode.